I'm packing up and I'm about to head out to the farmer's market to get all of our groceries that we're gonna need for our meal prep for the week. Honestly, not everything that we usually get can be found at the farmer's market. A lot of the produce is only seasonal there and we do get a few things that are not, you know, in season. So because of that, I also often have to supplement the farmer's market trip with a regular trip to the grocery store. But today I'm just gonna do the farmer's market haul. I wanna show you guys around the Union Square farmer's market, show you why I love it so much, and show you kind of like the classic typical things that I get when I'm there that I wind up prepping for the week. So I'm gonna go get my reusable bags. I'm gonna take the compost scraps out of our freezer so I can drop those off and let's go to the market. Okay, so I made it to the farmer's market, but I realized a few things. So number one, it's a Monday right now. I never come to the market on Mondays. I'm always here on the weekends, and I didn't realize how sparse and empty it was gonna look on a Monday. Normally there are vendors all lined up behind where I am. There's currently nothing here. Also, as you go down to the end of the market, usually you can turn the other direction along the north side of the park, and there's tons of vendors, usually fresh produce, all up there, and it's completely empty today. So I should have thought about a few things. Number one, it being a Monday. Number two, it being winter. The farmer's market in the summer is always a lot busier. And number three, I guess, COVID. There are a lot of reasons why this market is not looking the way it normally looks. So for anyone who doesn't live in New York, don't take this visual that you're about to see as an accurate representation of what the Union Square Farmer's Market looks like or what it's all about. It's definitely a lot busier and more intense than this on a typical day. Right now, if I look down there, I'm seeing some bread, I'm seeing some specialty stations, like some honeys, as well as some meats and eggs. And I also see further down there are some apples and a little bit of produce at the end, but there's honestly normally three times the amount of vendors and trucks here. And there's also normally like 12 times the amount of people here. So this is just a kind of quiet day at the farmer's market in New York. I'm still gonna show you some of the products and we'll focus on what I get. Hopefully I can get everything I typically need in a week, but I'll let you know. Where's your farm? Uh, the farm is located in Lafayette, New Jersey, which is about 40 minutes outside of the city to the northwest. We're in Roxbury, Connecticut, oh, which is the bottom of Litchfield County. I got pretty much all that I could find. It's not all that I typically would get at the market, but I think it's enough to sustain us for a week with maybe like one trip to the grocery store to add in. But I'm on my way home, so let's go unpack this and let me show you a quick haul of what I got. The one thing that I'm kind of sad that wasn't there that's my favorite stall is the dried flower stall. So I'm gonna do some Googling and find out what the name of the company is and I'll pop it up here. But they make the most gorgeous dried flower bundles and every time I'm at the market, I can't resist. So I would highly recommend checking that out. We are home from the farmer's market. I have with me all of the items that I bought and I'm about to do the haul. But before I dive into it, I wanna let you know this video is sponsored by Zarbies. Let me pull it out. Black elderberry immune support, so I will touch on this a little bit later down the line, but thank you so much to Zarbies for helping support my healthy immune system throughout this time, and thank you to all these fruits and veggies for also doing the same. 
Okay, so as I mentioned at the market, a lot of the vendors and stalls were just not there. I thought that going on a Monday was a good idea because I thought it would be just way less crowded, which was true, but unfortunately it was also less crowded for the vendors as well. So there were not nearly as many stalls as there typically are. Generally, if you go to the Union Square Farmer's Market, the entire western side of the park is lined up with vendors. Also the entire northern side of the park is lined up with vendors. And even some of the eastern side of the park, that's normally where the compost is and like the Lower East Side Ecology Club sets up their little station there. Most of that stuff wasn't there, but I still wanted to create a video for you where I showed a typical look at what Michael and I might get on a standard trip to the market. And generally we try to get as much of our produce as possible from the farmer's market. It's all local, organic for the most part, you know, very affordable and it comes naked. Like they don't put it in any bags if you tell them that you've brought your own bags. So we really love that, but often stuff is not in season and we do eat fruits and vegetables that are not necessarily in season at the time. So we have to go to the grocery store to supplement and get a few things. But everything here was available today at the market. So let me just walk you through what I got. Starting with this spinach bundle. So many of you have seen me get bundles like this at the farmer's market before. Often it's a lot bigger and it looks like it's so much spinach, but as soon as you start cleaning the leaves and laying it out, you realize that spinach shrinks down when you cook it. So something like this could honestly be like one dinner's worth of spinach. I'm gonna put all the stuff behind me when I'm done. I got a couple root vegetables, so I love getting things like parsnips, and they often look really ugly, like this is like an octopus parsnip, but I'm really excited to cook with this. So I got two. These days at the farmer's market, you can't touch and pick up items unless you know, it's already in your bag. So instead they just ask you what size you want or you can like point and then they'll take that one. And so I always like to pick the bizarre looking fruits and vegetables because I kind of know no one else is gonna pick them and I feel really bad for them. But also I think they're really funny. So I got this Octo Parsnip, really cute. And this one. And more root vegetables. I got a bunch of carrots. This time, because most of the fruit and vegetable vendors weren't there like normal, I think I got three. Where's the third? Where's my carrot? We'll find it. But anyway, because the normal vendors weren't there, I actually had to get the carrots like this. Whereas typically at the farmer's market, you will find bundles of carrots that have luscious, green, you know, greens flowing off the top. And I really do like getting those. I, I don't know why I like getting them in a bundle and I like when they come with the greenery on top. Usually the person working there will ask if you wanna remove the greenery and they can compost it for you right there, which I do to save space in my fridge. But today they only had these loose ones and I was pretty sure I got three, but I am not able to, I found it. Michael and I don't really roast carrots. We mostly use this in things like juices. And so I like to get the big thick ones if I can because it makes for more juice. Carrots. All right, quick break to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Zarbies. As you can tell from my haul so far, I get a lot of healthy fruits and vegetables at the farmer's market. I'm always doing my best to try to support a healthy immune system at home. I also incorporate a lot of other healthy habits and practices throughout the day to try to keep my immune system supported. It is obviously a very tough time right now with COVID and people being really worried about getting sick. And so I just think the best thing everyone can do all around is try to support their own immune systems at home. There are so many different ways that I do this. Obviously fresh fruits and vegetables and what I'm incorporating into my diet is very important. I also make sure I'm staying hydrated. I drink a lot of water. I focus a lot on healthy fats. So I often will buy avocados at the grocery store. Those are not in season at our farmer's market. So I get that kind of stuff at the grocery store and I have smoothies with avocados and coconut oil. I'm always trying to incorporate healthy fats that way. And if ever I find a supplement that is helpful at just kind of keeping my immune system intact and just keeping things as positive as possible, I love it. I first heard about Zarbies from my friend who lives in California and I ran out to try it on my own. This is a highly concentrated elderberry syrup. It's loaded up with real elderberry, vitamin C, and zinc. There's no artificial flavors, no alcohols, no gluten, perfect for me. So here's what I do, I just shake it up I pour it onto a teaspoon and I'll take two teaspoons in a day. I don't use it every single day just because I don't use anything every single day and I often forget to take supplements, but 
when I just remember this, I try to keep it in a place in my cabinet where I see it whenever I'm going to get honey or tea. And whenever I remember it, I'll just pop it on the spoon and take it like a supplement. And on days when my energy is a little bit lower, then I'll take it every four to six hours for the entire day. If you're interested in immune support, I would highly recommend you try this. So I'll put a link down below if you wanna try it. And thank you so much to Zarbies for sponsoring our video. Onions. So I went with red today. We sort of alternate between using red or white or yellow onions, but I got three big juicy red onions. So this is very exciting. This one looks like it still has like the little top piece on it, which is kind of cool. And I am going to make an entire video sharing sort of how we meal prep this food and other foods. So I'm not going to work on that with this batch of food, but the next time I do a grocery shop, I will make that video for you. And typically what we do with onions is we will just like take the edges off and chop this into cubes, put it in a glass jar and have it like prepped in the fridge raw. That way when we're cooking, we can either just like throw the raw onion on the skillet and saute it, pop it in the oven and bake it, but it's already pre-prepped and pre-chopped. I love to save time like that so that when it comes time to cook, I don't have to do any of the prep of peeling and chopping, but I can just like throw stuff on the pan. And then I got a few sweet potatoes. One thing I love about the farmer's market and when you get, you know, produce is it's usually completely imperfect to the point where if someone saw it on the grocery store shelf, they might not buy it. In fact, grocery stores might not even stock it because it looks so weird. So just an example, these potatoes have like some strange indents on them. These lines going down the middle that make them look really funny. And this one has a few holes in it. Like it looks weird. But you realize, you know, when you go to the farmer's market, these farms are small family local farms. They're not using pesticides. There are so many signs around the farmer's market that say pesticide free, organic, and then for the meats, hormone free, antibiotic free, free range. These aren't like genetically modified fruits and vegetables, so they're naturally not perfect looking. And I kind of like that. And I often, as I said before, will pick the ones that look super bizarre because I know they're gonna taste the same and I'm worried that no one else is gonna buy them. So I'm like rescuing the fruits and vegetables. So here are the sweet potatoes. All right, then I got a whole bunch of, this bag is now just filled with Brussels sprouts. So you can see inside, I got a whole bunch of Brussies. The Brussels sprouts are not something that we would usually prep ahead of time. These we can kind of like chop on the day that we plan on cooking them. But if I was gonna prep them, I would just cut off like the little knob on the end and just leave them whole or have them. And that way I can throw them in the oven really easily. Okay, so we've got Brussels sprouts here. Next, I went with some of these smaller yellow potatoes and these are just good for baking. Michael and I often like to make french fry looking things or just, you know, quarter crescent shaped baked potatoes and these are perfect. Something like a potato, I've also made the mistake in the past of washing it and then storing it in the fridge after it's washed and sometimes when you wet it ahead of time and then put it in the fridge, the water like seeps in and it starts to get soft a little too quickly. So, I would just not wash these until I was about to use them. And I also wouldn't chop these and pre-prep these as chopped vegetables first, just because I noticed that when I chop potatoes and I put them in the fridge, they start to get like discolored and I'd rather just use them live. We'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Next piece of produce, I got these scallions and I wanted to show you a little hack on how you can kind of care for your scallions and make them last longer. I used to just throw the bundle like this into the fridge and then I realized that the top especially would start to get wilted pretty quickly. So here's a hack. Just take a little cup of water like this. It can be a mason jar, a regular cup. I'm gonna take the rubber bands off. You just pop the little root edges into the water like this and then store them in the fridge like this. And this will keep, <laughs> this one does not wanna stand up. And this is how I would store my scallions in the fridge and it would definitely make them last a lot longer. And you can even see they'll like even keep growing like this in water. So it's a really good way to keep them fresh and keep them crispy if you're not gonna use them the day you bought them. Next for produce, I bought these four apples. So I don't even remember what types they are. Gala, Golden Delicious, Granny Smith, I don't know. But I just picked four. Once again, I went for the ones that had scars and scabs and things that would make it so other people might not buy them. And part of the reason I really don't care what my apples look like is because I mainly these days have been using apples in juice. So I've been taking my juicer, I've been taking carrots, 
celery, lemon, ginger, apple, and cucumber, and just making like a really nice, it ends up being orange, juice. And I really just don't care what the apples look like. I wash them, I cut them, and I just put them right through the juicer, and it doesn't matter if they had a scar or a scab. So, got four apples today. The next thing I'm pretty excited about is this honeycomb. This is a new purchase for me. I've never bought it before. This entire thing was $10, so this definitely made my entire shop at the farmer's market a little bit more expensive. But this is honeycomb from Andrew's Honey, and as I was shopping today, I decided to chat with Andrew. He was standing there, and I asked him a few questions about his honey, so let me pop that in. This is Andrew. Hello. Of Andrew's Honey. Yes. Do you keep the bees yourself? I do, yeah. I keep bees, my father does, his mother did, her father did. It's been in the family a long time. Are you covered in stings or they love you? Uh, they love me, but they show their love by stinging me. <laughs> What's the difference between all the different colors and like types? Is it different bees or? Not different bees, uh, different types of flowers. So for example, uh, if the bees pollinate a buckwheat flower, uh -huh. the nectar will be nice and dark and the honey resulting from that will be very dark. Whereas linden honey will be light and the tastes are very different. Uh, this is heavy, dark, and molasses -y. This is light with a little mint and citrus here. Are produced on rooftops in New York City. We have beehives all over town, wow. on buildings and community gardens, etc., etc. And um, then what about this? You just pull this right out of the hive? Yep, this is the hive itself actually, so I just cut it out. And people can chew it like gum, cut it up, put it on a cheese platter. It's amazing. I think I'll take this. You deserve it. <laughs> I definitely plan on doing a video for you where I go join Andrew on a New York City rooftop and I learn how to be a beekeeper and harvest honey. So stay tuned for that video in the future. We already chatted, we exchanged social media information. So I will be doing that video soon. Last three items here. So number one are these cheese curds. I have never had these either, but I typically do get some type of cheese. Oftentimes it's a goat cheese or just a cheddar cheese, something that's local and that I know is gonna be a high quality cheese. I asked the woman who was working at the stall what cheese she recommended and she suggested the cheese curds. And I was like, I've never heard of a cheese curd, what is that? And she said it's kind of like cheese in its infancy stage. So like before it goes through the whole process, this is it like early on. So I'm gonna try it and we'll see how it is. This whole thing was $6. And I'm not like a huge cheese eater, so this is probably gonna last me for like a couple weeks. Let's see. Doesn't have much of a smell. Very mild. Oh my gosh. It's squeaking. But wow. Oh wow. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, I thought it was gonna taste like hard Parmesan, like it looks like, you know, hard cheese that you would find on a charcuterie board, but it's really soft, almost like a rubbery texture in a weird way, and it's really salty and really tasty, and that is good. Okay, this is good. Everyone try a cheese curd. The last two things that I've been starting to really wanna get more and more at the farmer's market, I used to just get these at the grocery store, but the more I see them at the market, the more I'm intrigued and the more I realized I wanna start buying them there are eggs and meat. So I have here free range, pasture raised, happy, healthy hens producing all sized brown eggs. And this is from a farm in Roxbury, Connecticut. The eggs look great. I of course checked them before buying them to make sure there were no cracks, but I haven't cracked these yet, but I can tell you just from the source from where they're from, this is the name of the farm, Ox Hollow. I can tell you with certainty that these eggs are going to be orange, not yellow. And if I've ever learned anything about eggs, it's that the more orange the yolk is, the better the egg is. You know, the more nutrient dense it is, the better the chicken's health was. And typically these days I've been having two eggs for breakfast. Sometimes I don't have an egg, but I really like eggs. So two dozen eggs for us is probably good for a couple weeks. And so now we've got that. And then, as I mentioned, the chicken. I was not really the kind of person who ever purchased my meat at the farmer's market before, but I noticed that they have so many stalls with loads of different types of meat. And if you're gonna get meat, 
to eat in the first place. Like I try to be really careful at the grocery store, reading packages, making sure that it's organic, making sure that it's free roaming, antibiotic free, hormone free, all that stuff that meat should be. And to be honest, there's no better place to get that than you know supporting your local small farmers at your local farmer's market. So I'm gonna try this young chicken breast cutlet. It's medium thin cut and I'm gonna just pop it in the freezer and cook it for lunch and dinner this week. And I will let you know if it's really delicious as I'm sure it will be. But from now on, I'm gonna really try to continue getting my meats at the farmer's market instead of the grocery store. As I mentioned, we often do have to supplement with some things from the grocery store. So I've recently been getting things like citrus and avocados at the grocery store, also bananas. Those are not available at the Union Square Farmer's Market in the winter. And I also rarely buy tomatoes anymore because we have a tomato garden here in the kitchen. Also, I have been growing other produce in our shelf garden over there. I had to clean it up recently because there was some nutrient buildup in the pipes. So I currently have some new stuff growing in the nursery that I will ultimately transplant into the garden. But I have two cucumber plants, two pea pod plants, and two eggplants. Two eggplant plants. Two eggplants or two eggplant plants? Eggplant plants. They're not eggplants. And that's it. Thank you so much for coming back to my YouTube channel. I hope you subscribed. If you like this video, stick around because very shortly I'll be doing a video very similar to this where I show you how I meal prep all of this stuff for the week to come. And don't forget to click the thumbs up button down below if you like this to let me know that you want to see more videos like this one. I don't know when the time will come, but I'm getting so excited for the future when it is more safe to go outside, especially without masks, so I can start taking you around New York City and showing you more stuff that I love and more places that I go to frequently. In the meantime, just drop your ideas down below. I'm keeping a steady list of ideas so that I can make sure to come back hot as soon as the world is normal again. <laughs> Who knows when that will be, but let's hope it's tomorrow morning. Sending you all so much love from our kitchen in New York, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.